I think that we can all agree that Wayland has been a controversial topic that has plagued the Linux desktop world for years. And not without reason. It's a way different approach on how displaying graphical applications, games and similar used to get displayed. And broke a lot of stuff, simply because it's not a drop in replacement and still required a lot of development and implementations. But what even is Wayland? Well, it's a display protocol that connects so-called Wayland clients, which are typically regular applications like Firefox, to a compositor, which then handles the rendering and window management, so that content can actually get displayed on a monitor. In contrast to the old protocol X11, whereas events on your screen had to take several detours through a growing library of outdated features, Wayland talks to the compositor directly and offers a faster and, very importantly, more secure way to accessing graphical data in your applications. Like, everything has to ask the Wayland compositor if they are even allowed to access a certain application or webcam. But the thing is that up until a year ago, or in some cases even just months, these Wayland compositors were just lacking a bunch of features, since they were essentially built from the ground up, and just weren't capable yet to provide access for every resource. For example, on Wayland we can utilize Pipewire to access our video and audio streams for an application to capture. It's basically asking the Wayland compositor if it is allowed to access the thing that it's being told to access. And the compositor decides, after first asking the user or relying on predefined rules, if it should. And these implementations took a long time to create, especially if an application tries to ask the compositor for something that doesn't yet exist. But for most of the problems that an average user may experience, there is already a solution. Wayland compositors, developed by the desktop environments or collaborative efforts, can nowadays handle almost everything, from scaling, variable refresh rate support, screen capture, hotkeys, notifications and, well, more. In fact, today with sandboxed applications like Flatpaks, which run in their own little environment for better compatibility, security has been improved even further by introducing portals that serve as a more or less static permission layer, which talks to the compositor. Alright, kind of butchered that explanation, but in a nutshell, that's how it works. So why is 2025 going to be the year of the Wayland desktop? Well, in some sense, even the previous years already kind of were. Gamescope, Valve's own compositor, runs exclusively on Wayland, and so do the window managers Sway and Hyperland. Both the desktop environments GNOME and KDE Plasma transitioned to it by default, and even removed old X11 dependencies. But there were still these annoyances that affected many users. In Discord, screen sharing on Wayland just didn't work. Then someone found a fix to just run it through X Wayland. They pushed an update and it broke again, unless you made further changes. Then there was the startup problem that used to happen because Wayland was originally built for displaying frames perfectly, and it took a long time to implement new ways on how to minimize latency, even by optionally allowing screen tearing. VR headsets didn't work, because there wasn't a good way to hand over the rendering directly to them to minimize latency. You know, all the security reasons that I mentioned earlier, with the compositor needing to support all the VR headsets and taking control of the graphical output. Variable refresh rates and scaling had to be resolved. Nvidia GPUs suffered from synchronization errors, leading to stutters, lower FPS or in some cases even crashes. And then there's of course the still ongoing problem that not every application supports Wayland natively yet. But nowadays the story changed and I can now finally believe that Wayland usage is going to explode in the next couple of years. And with it, very important features. So here is what it does better than X11. It can address several displays individually, instead of merging them into one big one. Very important for different refresh rates or color profiles. Sure, there were some workarounds in place for X11, but they didn't always work perfectly. Another downside to X11 is that it won't support HDR, so if you want to use it, you have to use Wayland. Applications feel more responsive, since the overhead of instructions traveling around all these different parts are no longer necessary. Touchscreens can be addressed without hacky workarounds, and with more and more applications being natively compatible with Wayland, performance and especially latencies are going to improve. Wine, one of the foundations of Valve's compatibility layer Proton, is supporting Wayland in their latest release candidate, which will probably be used in its next iteration. Will the performance boost be massive? Probably not, but it will improve the 1% lows, and especially the latencies. Nvidia has also started to focus on Wayland as the future of their own driver. 
This year alone, the synchronization issues that caused stutters have been fixed, and they also announced to bring proper G-Sync and video acceleration support for it. Like sure, not every application is going to make it to Wayland in the same way as it used to work with the X11 protocol. But in some cases, it isn't supposed to work that way anyway. Security and all that. Like, I'm not gonna be the one to say that everything works now. I know that some applications and hotkeys don't work properly unless focused. And I know that some programs like OBS are missing some features, which can be worked around with plugins or some adjustments. But in the end, many of those problems can already be solved. It just takes some time, because the Linux desktop still hasn't the biggest share of users, and many developers just have different priorities. I mean it took Discord 4 years to implement screen sharing for Wayland, despite the underlying framework already supporting it. It of course took some effort to actually implement it, but it also wasn't their priority. Like who actually uses screen sharing on Linux out of all of the Discord users? But with Wayland maturing at an incredible rate, especially when looking back on how old the protocol itself already is, it's no surprise that everyone is slowly moving towards it. Desktop environments that still rely on X11 have started working on their own Wayland compositors. New ones don't even consider it anymore. And no matter if you like Wayland or not, at some point it is going to replace X11. And as long as X Wayland is around, there is always a fallback. I have been critical around Wayland in the past, because there just wasn't any progression at first. A lot of active blockers did hinder development, and the push towards the protocol while a lot of fixes were still written in the stars. But I have been proven wrong and even used Wayland for the past year myself. It works, but it hasn't always been this way, even on hardware that others told me had no problems. And next year, with HDR slowly marinating, it's gonna be interesting. And that's or I'll leave it. So what do you think? Do you believe that desktop environments that still rely on X11 are finally going to push the Wayland as well? Are you still affected by problems related to it? I would really like to know, so please make sure to leave a comment down below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel make even better videos, then please make sure to check out our membership program, as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching, and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.